the channel so let's start with chapter number 9 heredity and evolution so i today i would be covering three marks question related to it so let's start with question 1 so question 1 says what are sex chromosomes which sex chromosomes are found in male and female human beings state the chromosome responsible for the development of male child in human beings so first of all you have to define what are sex hormones this is for one mark so here you need to write sex chromosomes are set of chromosomes present in human beings which help in sex determination so this is the answer for sex chromosome now next which sex chromosome are found in male and female human beings so for male you need to write xy and you for female you need to write xx now state the chromosome responsible for the development of male child in human being so for male child it is y chromosome as male child is from xy sex chromosome so therefore y chromosome is responsible for the development of male child in human beings now moving on to next next is about fossil fuels so it says how are fossil studies important in working out evolutionary relationships how would be the age of fossils be determined so this this question has been divided into two parts first question is of 1 and 1/2 mark and another again is of 1 and 1/2 mark so first of all you need to tell them like how fossil studies important in working out relationship between evolution so here you need to write that fossils basically are the remains of organisms living in the past which got preserved in sediments of earth any remains of an organism that has been preserved in the earth crust that shows how the how the fossils actually are related to the evolution and you can determine the age of fossils with the help of dating using isotopes of carbon and the method name is carbon dating so that's how you can write question number 2 moving on to question number 3 it says a tall pea plant was crossed with a dwarf one f1 generation was allowed to self pollinate and f2 generation was also obtained answer the following question so as you know from the tall pea plant we have all tall so the phenotype of plants in f1 generation will be all tall no dwarf the second one what would be the phenotype ratio of f2 generation so this is actually 3 ratio 1 that means 3 are tall and one is dwarf next is you can make a table of that you can work out the hybrid there then you can show that it is 3 ratio 1 or you can directly straight away write 3 ratio 1 as you have earlier done this so c part it says give reason for your observation in f1 generation so the reason for this is that tall trait actually is dominant trait over short trait so therefore we have more tall plants as compared to the dwarf one or the smaller one next question is do eyes of octopus insect and human show relation in their evolutionary process so answer to it is no why because eyes of these animals do not show any evolutionary relationship as they are all analogous organs and analogous organs have internal stru- internal structure very quite different and their function might be same but their structure is altogether different in all organisms like you know some examples wings in bats wings in birds and insects so therefore these are considered to be as analogous organs now moving on to b part it says how can we say that birds had evolved from reptiles so as you know in dinosaurs and birds there is presence of feather now in earlier organism like in dinosaur they used to have feathers which are which were meant for providing insulation in cold weather slowly slowly they actually have been adapted for flight by birds 
so therefore the scientists have said that birds have evolved from reptiles as their feathers have been changed into changed into a process of flight like basically they have adapted it for flight so moving on to next it says state the meaning of inherited trait inherited traits and acquired traits which of the two is not passed on to the next generation explain with the help of example so acquired trait experiences of an individual trait during its lifetime so these are the acquired one which can we adapt we, which we can adapt from social life and inherited one is a genetically inherited that means from parents now the acquired traits they cannot be passed from one generation to the next because they are the acquired ones acquired means which we have adapted from social life so it cannot be passed but the inherited traits can be passed from one generation to another like in in under inherited we can consider eye color height or face size or many things are there so in acquired it could be example like power to lift weights and reading french it cannot be passed from one generation to another now moving on to next what is the difference between homologous organs and analogous organs give one example each so homologous organs structures in animals share a common ancestry that means the basic structure is quite similar whereas the origin is different basically they perform different function like we can give one example here like four limbs and vertebrates so they perform different function but they have similar structure now in analogous organs when we talk about in this we can take example of wings and bat and bird so why wings of bat and bird is because their structure is different and but their function is quite same and shape is also same so here you can write that analogous organs are the organs in different organism which have different basic structure but have similarity in shape and function in this you can write example of wings of bat and birds now moving on to next it says explain how gene expresses itself in a cell why are we somewhat similar to our parents yet not identical to them so first of all you should know like genes are functional segments of dna they are into d they are genes are present in dna so they are basically the units of hereditary that gets passed on through reproduction from parents to their progeny that means to the next generation so dna actually contain all the information as you know dna can carry all the hereditary parts of our parents to next progeny so basically dna is in the form of proteins and proteins make structure in our body and also control their functioning so basically in this case you can write that tissues organs and hence a living body expresses the traits inherited as genes or dna so since we inherit the dna half from one and a half from the other parent hence we somewhat resemble them therefore not identical because we get some dna from mother and from father so therefore we are not identical to them but somewhat similar now moving on to next we have what function is performed by human arms four limbs of dog and four limbs of whales which type of organs are these why do we call them so so human arm is used for holding things four limbs of dog is used for running and four limbs of whales is for paddling now this is homologous because same origin but different function so why do we call them so is again the same reason same origin and different function next is insects octopus and vertebrates all have eyes can we group eyes of these animals 
together to establish a common evolutionary origin justify your answer so the answer for this is no again why because the structure of the eye in each of the organism is different so therefore we can say that they, these are analogous organs so therefore we can't say that there is any common evolutionary origin to it now second part says birds have evolved from reptiles state evidence to prove the statement so this has been done earlier in the last two questions i think so let's start with next one so it says chromosomes are hereditary carriers why do we say so which vital function is not controlled by autosomes so chromosomes as you know are made up of dna so the first line you should write is that chromosomes are made up of dna and genes are located on the chromosomes give whole function about these two as well then write that the dna copy it is the dna copy which transfer from both the parents to their offsprings and therefore chromosomes made up of dna and containing genes in it are said to be the hereditary carriers so must write about chromosome dna and genes in these types of question then only you will be justify the answer to it now second part it says which vital function is not controlled by autosome so sex of the child is not controlled by autosomes in it it is only controlled by the sex chromosome now next is which type of organs are shown in the figure which type of origin and stru structure do these organs have so these are or organs which help in flying that is wings of insect uh, and on the other hand you have wings of bird so the next is which type of origin and structure do these organs have so the structure and components of the wings are different they look similar because they have a common use for flying but the organs are not not having the same origin so therefore they are analogous organs now next question next question says identify the organism shown in the above figure so this is planaria next is name one incipient feature incipient feature selected by the nature so eyes which were there only for detecting light that was one of the feature planaria has now mention any other primitive feature of birds so birds as discussed earlier birds have developed feathers for the insulation so that's the primitive feature of bird now next one it says cross was carried out between a pure bred breed tall pea plant and pure breed dwarf pea plant and f1 progeny was obtained so f1 progeny has all tall plants so a part is tall plants because genes responsible for tallness are dominant over dwarf trait so that's your answer for the first one so this is similar to the last one we did so b part says give the phenotypic ratio of the f2 progeny so 3 ratio 1 tall and dwarf 3 is tall and 1 is dwarf now next is why is the f2 progeny different from the f1 progeny because in f2 generation the recessive genes got expressed in homozygous condition therefore we obtained one dwarf in it now next is what is speciation discuss any two factors that led to speciation so speciation means creation of new species from pre existent pre existing ones so there might be changes due to natural selection or there might be changes due to genes or it is also known as genetic drift so first of all you need to write about the natural selection like there could be some natural selection therefore the new species is there like formation of new species is there so it could be either due to uh, reproductive barriers or separated population of a species due to geographical barrier or in the second one you can write there could be 
लाइक जेनेटिक ड्रिफ्ट और वी कैन से जेनेटिक ड्रिफ्ट बेसिकली मीन्स देयर इज सम चेंजेस इन द जीन्स विच दे यूज टू हैव एज अ हेरिडिटी सो दैट इज ऑल्सो नोन एज जेनेटिक ड्रिफ्ट सो हेयर यू कैन राइट टू फैक्टर्स वन इज नेचुरल सिलेक्शन और अनदर इज जेनेटिक ड्रिफ्ट नेक्स्ट इज एक्सप्लेन द मैनर इन विच सेक्स इज डिटरमाइंड इन ह्यूमन बींग्स सो हेयर यू नीड टू फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल राइट वॉट आर सेक्स क्रोमोजोम सो द सेक्स इज डिटरमाइंड बाई स्पेसिफिक पेयर ऑफ क्रोमोजोम कॉल्ड सेक्स क्रोमोजोम देन यू नीड टू राइट दैट इन फीमेल ह्यूमन बींग्स दे हैव होमोलोगस ऑल द क्रोमोजोम्स दैट मीन्स एक्स एक्स देन यू नीड टू डिफाइन फॉर मेल दैट that is a heterologous and you need to write that it has x y pair then you have to draw draw the relation between x x and x y so draw that structure of it and show how we how they have 50% chances of having male and 50% chances of having female so show the relation between them x with y again and x with x so it will be x x so there is chances that they get 50% male and 50% female that means the ratio is same 50 50 chances are there that they might have male or female so that's all for uh three marker question if you done this these all questions then they might be helpful for your cbsc board examination so have a great day we'll meet you in next video